Welcome everyone, I'm John Romine. I'm Director of Computing here at the Henry Samuel L.A. School of Engineering. The school is hosting Drupal Camp this year for the fourth year in a row. We're very happy to, to be able to provide the venue for Drupal Camp. Uh, this session is Building Sites Fast with Drush Make and Installation Profiles. So, you've probably built a Drupal site before. How do you build a Drupal site? The normal process. You download Drupal and you untar it and extract it somewhere in your document root. You run through the Drupal installation with the GUI and you fill out some forms and post that. Um, I left off the database part, of course you had to create that in advance. Um, then you configure your site settings like what's the site name and so on. Uh, you create user accounts. Um, you download a theme, you unpack that, you put it in the themes folder, you go to the UI and you configure the theme settings. You download other modules that you're going to want like views and you extract those into sites all modules and then you go enable the views module through the module page and then maybe you need views UI too, you're probably going to. And then you start creating content and maybe create some views and you've got the basics of your site. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that in about one minute using Dresh Make, uh, Profiler Library, and potentially Features Module. So if you don't already have Drush installed, there was a talk this morning on Drush, so I would recommend that you watch the video from that talk to get it installed. If you're using Drupal's Quick Start environment, it's pre-installed for you. Drush Make is pre-installed in there too, but if you haven't installed Drush but not Drush Make, installing Drush Make is pretty easy. You just ask Drush to install it for you. Drush DL, Drush Make. And uh, I'm downloading the 6.x version for Drupal 6. It's not really a version in Drush or Drush Make, um, but there's no released version for Drupal 7. So giving it the 6.x just tells it where to get it. Yeah, Tommy? This morning Chris said in Drush 5, Make is included in Drush Core. The comment was that in, in Drush 5, Drush Make is included in Drush Core, so you won't even have to do this download. And a, a basic build file for Drush Make is basically just these three lines. Core equals 6.x. API equals 2, projects equals Drupal. These are the instructions to Drush Make to tell it how to make your site. To build a site, you run Drush Make, the name of the make file, in this case it's basic.build, and the path to your document root. And Drush Make will download Drupal and untar it for you. So that saved you a lot of time right there. So if you take a look at inside the document root, there's all the, the Drupal files. If you've got contrib modules that you want to download as well, you just add them into the Drush Make file. So here I'm adding the views and CCK modules. This is for Drupal 6. Most of my examples are for Drupal 6. It works pretty much the same in Drupal 7. And then when you run Drush Make, it will download Drupal and it will get the latest versions of those two projects, the views module and the CCK module. And if you take a look inside, then you've got the document root is there and inside sites all modules is CCK and the views modules. If you're building Drupal 7, you really only need to change one thing, change the core equals line to 7.x. Then when you run Drush Make, it will download Drupal 7 core along with, again, the latest version of the Drupal 7 module for views. Sometimes you might be building a site and there's different versions of the module that have been released and uh, if you're building a site and you want to ensure that it's going to work in other deployments, you might pick a set of version numbers of the particular modules you're using so that you can guarantee you're getting, uh, you're getting the site built the way you expect it to be built with no new features or new bugs. So you can specify the version numbers of the modules that you want to use in your build. And the way you do that is you use a little bit of an expanded syntax. Instead of just projects equals, you say projects with the module name and then equals the version number and then you can see in the example it downloads those two exact versions of those modules. If you want to store the modules in a different subfolder you can do that as well and here I'm showing the fully expanded syntax for this so you've got projects CCK version equals 2.9 projects CCK subdir equals contrib so then it's going to put those modules in a subfolder named contrib under your sites all modules folder. You can also ask Drush Make to get modules from other places. So I was downloading those CCK and views from Drupal.org, but if you have your own modules in your own locations, 
you can specify where to go fetch those as well. So here I'm fetching um, the UCI Net ID module from a URL. And Dresh Make will go retrieve that with HTTPS. You might also need patches to modules occasionally. In particular, I've run into sites where the module maintainer has not released a new version of the module in quite some time. And some of the patches that have been applied perhaps to the dev version are, are things that you need, but you're not willing to download the current day's dev version of the module. You want a, a static version of the module, but you also want to apply a few patches. Dresh may can patch the module for you, and believe me, this is a huge time saver when you're real building sites. So you just specify the patch that you want. Dresh make will go fetch the patch and apply it for you. Okay, this is the second half of the talk. That's why I said we were moving pretty fast. This is building an installation profile. So Dresh make downloads all of these modules for you, but it doesn't help you build your site. You still have to go through all of the configuration of the site and, and setting all the variables and uh, setting up the themes and so on. Um, we're going to use a library called Profiler Library uh, in order to do that. So here I've got a profile that I've set up and I'm going to ask Dresh Make to go fetch that for me. And here, just like I was earlier loading with HTTP, here I'm going to download my profile with Git. You, again, you can use whichever retrieval method you want. It also supports FTP. So here's a copy of what my myprofile.git installation profile looks like. It's got the files in there just like a module would. It has a myprofile.profile file in a module it would typically named dot module. It's got an install file, which is optional, and it's got an info file. So it looks pretty similar to what you would do if you were building your own module. We also have an extra make file in here. And th this is something that Dresh Make will help me streamline my process. Dresh Make is going to notice that make file is part of this module, and it's going to run that make file as well as the original make file that I'm building. So here's the included make file. Now in this case, I've commented out the line for projects equals Drupal. The reason is my top level make file is going to include Drupal and this profile. So I don't want to re-include Drupal again in the, the sub make file that's part of this profile. Here I'm including views, CCK modules, and the profiler library. So here's what some of those files look like. The profile file is a P PHP file that um, Drupal is going to run to help install your Drupal site. And in this case, all we're really doing is including the profiler library and then calling the profiler library's function call, profiler v2, to tell it to install with my profile. This is basically boilerplate you're going to have in this file in whatever profile you set up, and it'll just have your profile's name instead of my profile. The myprofile.install file, I said that one was optional. Uh, profiler library can do a lot of things for you. It can set a lot of variables, but it can't do everything that you might need to do when you're setting up a Drupal site. So if you know some changes that you need to make, you can hard code them here in PHP. So in this case, I'm removing permissions to, from the anonymous user. Okay, here's the heart of the system. It's the info file that profiler library is going to read you're going to put in that file instructions to tell Profiler Library how to configure your site. So Dresh Make is going to download all the modules for you, then Profiler Library is going to configure them all for you. Here's what uh, the top part of the info file looks like. So I'm setting the name of the, f of the uh, profile and the description and the Drupal core version, and I'm setting my default theme. And I. I'm going through the file now in these next few slides. So these are other, other um, directives that you're going to include in your info file. So here you have dependencies equal. And, and this is pretty similar to what you would have in your own module where you would list the dependencies that your module depends on. Here what you're doing is telling um, Profiler Library, these modules will need to be enabled when you build my site. If you don't enable any modules, then Profiler will build you a site with no modules turned on which is substantially different from standard Drupal. Standard Drupal is going to give you a preset group of core modules already built. 
So here you're going to need to include all of those or they're not going to be included. And then down below I've decided to include views and view, uh, views UI um, as well. I want those two uh, to be turned on. Profiler will also let you pre-create user accounts. This is very handy if you have a couple of standard systems management accounts that you're going to use on all your sites. Here I'm creating the admin account and I'm, I'm uh, giving it uh, an email address and a role. When you install your site with, with the install.php, you still have to install it. When you do that install, normally Drupal prompts you for a few things like what is the name of your admin user, what is your site name, and so on. If you've created user one, which we did on the previous screen here, and also set the site name and site email, then when you go to install your site with Drupal, it will notice that those settings are already done and it won't prompt you for anything. So you'll go straight from the installation script to your site being installed. Uh, and then I'm also setting here a couple extra variables. I'm setting the site footer to a text string. I'm setting the, you, the uh, node number there for the front page of my site. Here I'm setting some theme variables. So I'm, I'm turning off the submitted by username on date text for the page content type. I'm telling Drupal I want it to turn on CSS and JavaScript aggregation. I'm setting a default time zone and I'm saying I do not want to have user configurable time zones per user. If you have a custom theme, you can also set up custom theme settings. And so here I'm using Aquia Marina as my theme in one of my uh, examples. And so I've set up a bunch of Aquia Marina's variable settings. So those will be preset for me when I build my site. Last thing that Profiler can do for you is create nodes for you. So here I've got an example. I'm creating a node and it's got some content in it. Um, I was talking to somebody at a meetup a couple of weeks ago and um, we were talking about after you build your site, you still have a lot of things that you might need to do, setting your site name and so on. Well, we can do a lot of those through Profiler library, but you might have other things that you want um, the site to be how you want the site to be set up sort of steps that you might remember need to remember that you need to do and this would be a good way to do that you could set your first node on your site to have sort of a to-do list of your action items that things that you need to do um, I do that on one site that I build and then I've got a list of steps that need to be ha need to happen like create this user account and you know set this permissions this way you know make sure this view is turned on the way I want and then the very last step is reset the home page to be what the page that it's supposed to be. So every time I go to my home page, I've got that list being displayed of things I need to do. And I, I just kind of go through them one by one and then go back home, do the next one, go back home. And when I do the last one, then I set the home page to where I want it to be and my site is up and ready to go. So here's a few notes. This is my last slide and we'll do, we'll give some questions and I'll, I may even try to do the demo. Um, if you have content types that you want to build, like I use a calendar content type, uh, a uh, yeah, an event content type so that I can do a calendar, then I use features module for that. So features module lets you go through the GUI of, of Drupal, set up the content type the way you want, and then export that into a module. It saves the whole configuration for that content type. Then when you build your new site, you would tell it to include that features module that you built and then that will recreate that content type in your new site. And you can do the same thing for views and other settings. There's also a module that uh, is being worked on the configuration management module, which is going to supplant some of the things that features does. So you might want to look into that one too. Important thing to note is that profiler module library is only going to run at installation time. So it's only running the very first time you're building your site. If you have settings that you only want to set once, that you only need to set once, this is the perfect place to put them. Um, if you have settings that you are changing in your site, like say, like we talked about the content types or the views, or maybe just other settings in your sites, you might want to put them in a features module instead. Because that way, as you upgrade sites, you can revert the features module and get those changes incorporated into a site that, that has already been built. 
Um, if you build yourself a new copy of your site with, um, with Drush Bake, again, the installation profile part won't run because it's only going to run the first time you build the site, not when you update the code uh, so that you can update the site. And here's the, the, my favorite part of the whole process, which is how to update Drupal. So in a typical site, you would install this Drupal the normal way, and then when you need to update things, like if you need to update views module, you know, you're going to go and you're going to put your site in maintenance mode, and um, you're going to download the new version of, of the module and unpack it and replace the one that's in the sites all modules folder, and then you're going to run Drush, or sorry, you're going to go to the update.php, and you're going to update to run any database updates that have changed, and then put your site back online, and then make sure everything's working. And if that was your live site, you're going to be very sad if anything's broken. So that's not how I upgrade sites anymore. The way that I do it now is I rerun Drush Make, and I build myself a new document route. If I have updated versions of the modules that I want included in my recipe, I just put those version numbers in my make file. Or if I'm willing to go with whatever the most current version of the module is, you can just do that too. And then Drush Make will again build you a new copy of your site, downloading all the same modules that it downloaded the first time. Then I move my sites and my files directories into the new document root, and then I put the new document root back at the location of my old document root. And then I use Drush to do the database updates. So Drush update DB, that runs my database updates from the command line. Um, this is an extremely streamlined process. It works really, really well for me. It guarantees that as I'm building a site, if I want to let other schools on campus build the same application using my same configuration, they're getting the exact same configuration that I'm getting. So if they're running into a problem, I know which versions of the modules they've got installed and I can help them debug it by looking at the same problem on my site. Um, it works really, really well, and uh, I can't even think about going back to the old way of updating modules or Drupal core one by one in each site. That's pretty much all I've got uh, for the demo, for the, uh, the slides, and I'm going to stop my recording. I'll take some questions, and we'll see if I can do a demo.